It's good to brew, baby. What is up, YouTube? It's boy Millsy, back with hometown commander, back for another episode of Millsy Brews, the show where I brew my version 1.0 deck list to the commander in front of us on my quest to brew the magic world. As always, the deck list is going to be down in the description for you below. As well as, I really appreciate it if you get interact with the video, like, comment, subscribe, use those links down in the description. I would appreciate it. But today. We're moving through Bloomboro, we're having fun, and we're starting to look at all of the 10 tribes in this set. And uh, today we're going to talk about Is It Spells. You know it, you love it, and it wouldn't be a magic set without at least one new Is It Commander that cares about Is It Spells. And I think the Otters actually have two pretty interesting ones. We're going to talk about one this week, we're going to talk about one next week. But today we're talking about Alania Divergent Storm, a 5 mana 3 5 Otter Wizard that says whenever you cast a spell, if it's the first instant spell, the first sorcery spell, or the first otter spell, other than Elenia, you've cast this turn. You may have target opponent draw a card. If you do copy the spell, you may choose new targets for the copy. Lani is very interesting because it's giving us the option to copy these spells, which is a very strong effect, and we can plan for it and use it. But the thing that I missed the first time I read Alania that I got once I did a little more research is you actually get to copy one of each of these types every turn. One instant, one sorcery, one otter. And that makes Alania, uh, to me, a lot better because that copying can lead to really, really good effects. So we're going to talk a little bit about what the otters care about in this set, which is prowess and, and dealing damage on spell cast. You know, the classic is it thing. We're going to talk about the spells we really want to copy and get better when we can get multiple copies of them. We're going to talk about ways to copy those spells even more, which can be interesting and lead to great effect. And then we're going to talk about, well, just spell slinging in general, the ways that we're going to try to end the game with our spell slinging, dealing damage, getting value, all the things you expect from an Is It deck. And to me, uh, Alania can pack some power depending on what you choose to put in it. Well, as far as the otters go, um, we got uh, a couple new interesting pieces in this otter strategy. Ral, Crackling Wit, the new Planeswalker. Uh, says in river we cast a non-creature spell we put a loyalty counter on it the plus one can give us an otter that has prowess the minus three will allow us to draw three and pitch two and then the minus ten draws three and says that instant sorcerers we cast from our hand have storm storm meaning we copy it for each other instant sorcery we, we've cast uh, or spell we've cast this turn before it rouse very interesting in that it's not as much of a powerhouse as I, I wished it had been, but I think the otters are important, especially when you pair with effects like the other two you see on the screen in Balmor and Bria. These are both creatures that are going to effectively grow our creatures for every uh, cast, you know, spell we cast in that turn. And I think what are going to make the otters strong are going wide and using the prowess to go a little bit taller to have our opponents not just have to deal with what we're doing with spells, but also what we're doing with creatures. We see Corsication Mage from the main set four mana gives you two of them and each of them say whenever you cast a non-creature spell this creature deals one damage to each opponent this is important uh, for two reasons one this effect is very popular you know we have things like gutter snipe that will deal two damage when we cast a uh, you know a, a, an instant or sorcery but um, we can pair this ability up with other things uh, maybe multiple triggers or uh, you know uh more than one spell in a turn, and that two damage will just erode away on our opponents. Kitsa, Otter Ball, Elite from the main set. It's a very interesting card. Vigilance and Prowess, so not a bad body in itself. It's going to get bigger. You can tap to draw and then discard, which is very helpful in an Isn't Spells deck for two reasons. One, it helps you churn through your deck, get more spells into your hand. But two, some of our best is it win cons for spells are playing things back out of our graveyard. And so what Kitsa can also do is just throw a spell into your graveyard to cast for later. And then we can pay two and tap it to copy an instant or sorcery spell we control. We can only do it if it's if her power is three or greater. So uh, if we can cast two spells in a turn, we can start um, copying spells, which again is important. That's another copy of a key spell we can get. Stormcatch Mentor takes that classic uh, Goblin Electromancer ability to reduce instant or sorceries by one, but hands it haste and prowess on top of it, which makes it such a great creature. For this deck. Storm Splitter seems kind of interesting. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, you can make a token that's a copy of it and exile that token at the beginning of the next end step. 
kind of fun if we if we cast enough spells. We can have a little army of storm splitters if we want to. And then Valley Floodcaller. We can cast non-creature spells as though they had flash. That's great, because then we can take advantage of Alania's ability on someone else's turn, potentially for removal or different things like that. And it says whenever you cast a non-creature spell, birds, frogs, otters, and rats you control get plus one, plus one until end of turn. So kind of effectively giving all of our otters prowess, which is important, especially if we can get multiple kind of layers of prowess on our creatures. So we're kind of talking about the creatures that we want to play, but let's talk about the spells we want to copy. And I think where this really takes off is when we start to look at what exactly we want to copy. Uh, the first spells that came in mind to me were things like Crackle with Power or Jai's Emulating Inferno. These are sources that are just going to straight deal damage to up to so many targets. Uh, Crackle with Power can be extended to multiple targets other than just three, whereas Jaya's just deals X damage up to three targets. But your intention here is to put as much into X as you can, deal a bunch of damage to your opponents, and the cool part here is that Alani will actually just um, copy it as well, leading to double X damage early in all reality. Crackle's a little bit different. Crackle says it deals five times X damage to each up to X targets. For 11 mana total, you're dealing 15 damage to three targets, which is a which is a great thing to copy with Alani, right? Because then that's 30 damage to basically every other player. And that could be brutal for people to deal with. Another idea for a fun card is something like River's Rebuke, returning all non-land permanents target player controls to their hand. With Alani's ability, you get to choose new targets, meaning that River's Rebuke could just effectively Cyclonic Rift two different people and return all their permanents, non-land permanents back to their hand, which seems like a great ability. Seasonal Weaving is a card I like in this deck. It can draw you a bunch of cards. You can choose an artifact or creature and make a copy, or you can do that bounce effect. But the cool thing here is getting a copy allows you to choose different modes, right, each time. But my thought is, you know, for six mana with a Alani out, I could get four copies of a creature I control and draw two cards by getting it twice making Karskation Mage uh, trick copies, making other creature copies, and you start to see where something like that effect can get really good. Um, this might anger some people, but I think where is it spells tends to take its ramp up in power level is when we start to talk about a taking extra turns, taking extra turns to do more things, and Alania will let us copy these extra turn spells as long as they're our first spell in each turn. So I put Temporal Manipulation and Time Warp um, for two reasons. One, uh, they're well costed extra turn spells, but number two, as you start to take this deck and go up the power level chain, you'll start to realize that some extra turn spells that exile themselves after you cast them, some don't. And Time Warp and Temporal Manipulation are two that don't exile themselves, meaning when we talk about our end game payoffs like Mizzix Mastery, we can cast these back out of our graveyard to get their effects again down the line. Big score on unexpected windfall can get us draw. And the cool part about these two spells is we only have to pay the discard cost to cast it, and then Alania will give us a copy that we don't need to discard a card for. Effectively meaning for both, we're going to draw four and make four treasures, which is a great thing to pair with Alania's ability. Then we have something like Prismari Command there in the center, which does something very similar to those two cards, but also different at the same time. It can destroy artifacts, make treasures, draw two, and discard two. A Prismar Command has a very wide-ranging effect that makes it very useful because you can kind of do multiple things depending on what you need uh, to do uh, there. Now, unlike the seasons, you can only pick each of these once, so it does limit your options slightly, but I mean, even just, you know, making a treasure token for you twice and you know maybe destroying an artifact on one and drawing two and discarding two on the other is still a lot of value for just three mana if we have Alania L. But we don't again we don't want to just cast spells and have Alania be the only thing to copy them. We do have spells that can copy spells. So for things like Galvanic Iteration or Storm King's Thunder, they each say when you cast your next one, copy it X times. So the fun part there is if this is the first thing we cast with Alani out, we will ac actually get a double of this, meaning that with Galvanic Iteration, we would get two copies of that spell, or Storm King's Thunder, we would get X times two copies of whatever we pay. And that could be really important when you pair it with other abilities like Crack with Power or, or big damage spells or big value spells. And then you have something like Flare, which can just copy a spell at the right time, and you can sack a red non-token creature to to pay it instead of its mana cost, which isn't bad, especially if we have extra copies of creatures laying around or we have things laying around to do with it. But 
as we get into the spell singing section, this is where this deck and any is it deck uh, spells deck shine. This is where they their bread and butter is. This is what they are so good at, and this is what makes them so dangerous. And that's really gaming and taking advantage of casting spells and making casting spells easier. We have things like Sh Chandra Hope's Beacon over there on the left. Whenever we cast an instant or sorcery, copy it. We can choose new targets for the copy that only comes in, only happens once per turn. This Anilani out is going to lead us to, well, two copies of the first thing we cast each turn. The plus two adds us some mana. The plus one exiles the top five, and we can pick an instant or sorcery from among them to cast. And the minus X can deal some damage. The Chandra, more often than not, is just going to be effectively a one copy per turn and some mana if you need it. We talked about Corsication Mage being a very close to something like Gutter Snipe, and we're playing Gutter Snipe. Whenever you cast in Center Sorcery, it deals two damage to each opponent. Um, remember that when we copy these spells, they won't trigger Gutter Snipe again, but that doesn't, I, I don't think that matters when we're chipping that damage off and dealing with the other things we're dealing with. But a card I really like is something like Harmonic Prodigy. If an ability of a shaman or another wizard you control triggers, it triggers an additional time. Remember that most of the otters in our deck. Are wizards, meaning those abilities are going to go off more than once. This pair is really good with that Corsication Mage and Gutter Snipe, having their abilities go off twice instead of once. Not only do we have things like Chromatic Prodigy, but we have Veyron, Voice of Duality. It says if casting or copying an instant or sorcery causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that trigger ability triggers an additional time. So now potentially you have. Um, that gutter snipe or those those ping triggers going off two three times potentially as you could start to see the the exponential nature of that ramp up storm kiln artist is a great spell swinging payoff because it makes sorcery it makes treasures every time you cast or copy an instant of sorcery so now even when we're making all of those copies of those spells we're still netting treasures we can which can push our turn forward right and allow us to cast more spells in one turn twinning staff if we would copy one or a spell one or more times Copy it that many times plus an additional time. This, of course, is going to pair really well with Alania, getting us two copies of that spell instead of one. And that can be really, really, really good. This will also pair with every other copy ability as well. So I like Twinning Staff. It feels like it fits really well here. As far as pushing ourselves uh, towards the end game or the way to just go off every time we do it, we have, we have things like Thousand Year Storm, uh, which helps embody what the name Storm comes from. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, you copy it for each other instant or sorcery you cast before it this turn, and we can choose new targets for the copy. Fire Inscription is just another copy of that gutter snipe type effect that we have in the deck. And then Arcane Bombardment is one of my favorite spell singing finishers. Whenever you cast your first instant or sorcery this turn, we exile an instant or sorcery at random from our graveyard. And then we copy each exiled card with Arcane Bombardment and cast the copies without paying their mana cost. Um, this and Mizzix Mastery, which is not on the screen, which allows you to either cast one spell your graveyard or overload it to cast all spells from your graveyard for free, paired with enough of those pinger effects, could just end a game straight out right on the spot with those spells on the stack before they even resolve. And that's what you're working yourself towards. What I really like about Bombardment is you're, you're, you're kind of ramping your spell copying and these, these extra casts up every turn. You know, the first turn, hopefully, maybe you can get it down and get one underneath it. But if not, you just continue to get things underneath it as you go and you go, creating more and more and more value for yourself. But no deck is ever perfect. In fact, this is my version 1.0 deck, like I said at the start. And so I think there's a lot of ways we can improve the deck. And these are the three cards that almost made the cut and I want to talk about why they didn't and why I think you would look to something like them as you go into testing. Festival of Embers is a card that I think looks really cool on the surface. It says during your turn you can cast instant or sorcery spells from your graveyard by paying one life in addition to their other costs. But unfortunately this comes with a downside which is if a card or token would be put into your graveyard from anywhere you exile it instead but we can choose to pay two mana and sacrifice it at any time. Festival Amber seems like another copy, right, of this Arcane Bombardment style game plan for finishing the game, where we could then be casting the spells back out of our graveyard that we cast already. Um, if you notice that you're going through a lot of games and you're not finding those big finishing ways to start digging things back out of your graveyard, then I think Festival of Embers probably should come in as an option. Um, but its downside of exiling things once they're done means that... Um, you got to be careful when and how you use that uh, because you get that exile effect no matter whether or not you're casting things back out of your graveyard 
uh, with the Embers. Storm Chaser's talent makes a ton of sense. When it comes in, you get a woman with prowess. When it becomes level two, you get to bring one back from your graveyard to your hand. And then level three just lets you make an otter every time you cast an instant or sorcery. Uh, the only reason I didn't put the talent in is just because, to me, the level two paying four mana to get something back is a teeny bit expensive. And having to pay ten mana total to start getting otters every time we cast spells is just a little bit too much mana for me to make it worth it. I think it's going to come down to how really bad you want to have Otters with Prowess. If that's your goal, then I think it comes back in, and it probably fits a really good role in the deck. But I, uh, I'm i just not sure on the talent. I'm not sure how I feel about it as far as that much mana being needed. And then I added probably one of the strongest extra turn spells we've seen printed in the last uh, last 10 years, as far as that goes, is Nexus of Fate. Uh, you cast it, you get an extra turn, and it shuffles back into its owner's library instead. Nexus of Fate is a great extra turn spell because it doesn't go to your graveyard, it just back into your deck, and you could potentially uh, draw it again. But the reason that I only put the two extra turn spells in the deck and didn't go with more is because I know a lot of people have mixed emotions on extra turn spells, and well, some people enjoy them, some people don't. I didn't want to go too overboard on it and make it all about them being in there, but I still want to represent how good they can be in a spell singing deck and how important they can be. But let's get into our play tests. Let's get into seeing the deck in action. Keep it a uh, two lander with a Patrick Banner, Chandra, Bria, um, Alchemist talent, a card we didn't get to talk about, where when it comes in, you make treasures. We can tick it up to have treasures sack for two mana instead of one. And then its final ability, whenever you cast a spell of mana from a treasure was spent to cast it, deals damage equal to its mana value to each opponent, which is a great ability as well. And then Kitsa. So at least we have Kitsa on turn two, and we're just looking for um, another land to get the party started. And there it is. We'll play that uh, mountain turn one. Turn two, get that Sulfur Falls down. We might as well get Kitsa down. I mean, we've got nothing else better to turn on turn two. Alanya is five mana, so we do need to work our way up there, and this Patrick Banner is great for that. Not only does it buff all of our otters, but it can tap for a mana. So turn three, I think I will just get that banner down. This means I could, um, I can get Alanya down next turn, or if we choose to change our play, you know, we will have four mana next turn. The other thing that's good about this banner now is, is that Kits is at two power now. Um, because of Kits' ability of me casting on the creature spell, Kits is actually just at three right now. Of course, at end of turn, we'll go down to two. But that is an interesting thing now that Kits actually needs one spell cast now to be able to copy things, which could be important in the future. Uh, turn three, I would expect we'd be able to put Kits somewhere for three damage uh, if possible. So turn four, we're up to five mana. I think something like Bria could make sense, but I kind of just want to get Alania down and get it moving, so that way on future turns we can start copying. Alani is a 4-6, Kits is a 2-4, so, you know, we're we're in good shape there. Try to get Kits somewhere in turn 4 if we can, but otherwise I think we just move to next turn and try to start copying these abilities if possible. So, we see Decanter. Decanter is a great mana rock, add a mana of any color, and we have no maximum hand size. Uh, I actually can Decanter and do something like Seize the Spoils, which I would get copied, right, because of Alani's ability, which could be kind of fun. Uh, the question becomes, what would I pitch to the Seize the Spoils at the moment if I wanted to do it? Uh, I mean, right now my answer is Reality Shift, which seems kind of odd because we like removal, but I think I would just pay three to the Decanter and then pay three for Seize the Spoils. That's the first sorcery that I cast this turn, so I would probably just pick the opponent I'm least worried about at the table, let them have a card, and I would copy it. So I'm going to I'm gonna pitch the Reality Shift. This is going to draw me four cards total and then make me two treasures. So um, the whole point here is that we're going up on value by just pitching one card. Now, if I cast an instant this turn, um, I can get it copied, but I don't have enough mana to cast an instant even with those two... Um, treasures. If I'd had the extra mana, I could have tapped Kitsa to copy this another time, which I guess is a little bit of a missed opportunity, but that's okay. Kitsa is a 3-4 till end of turn, and we just, you know, take an attack here on turn 5 with a 3-4 and a 4-6. I think it's well worth the attacks there, and we'll move on to turn 6. On turn 6, we have 7 mana, which is a great amount of mana. I'd love to get this, um, 
twinning staff down, but I'd also really like to get Bria down, right? Bria will give all other things prowess, and then whenever we cast a non-creature spell, we can make something unblockable. Chandra would feel really good here, right? Being able to start copying things. I think my diversion point here would come down to what's the board looking like. If on turn six, my opponents are starting to look like they're going to take off pretty soon, I think I might go like Bria into twinning staff and set up for next turn, but I kind of like the idea of Chandra for six mana. I've got one mana left. Uh, ticker up two to add that extra three mana and just get that twinning staff down. This is going to have the prowess trigger for Kitsa go off. Um, but now next turn, we're setting up to copy two extra times on that first spell we cast, and maybe we'll get into something good with it there. Uh, we've got the extra two mana this turn, but I'd rather kind of, again, wait. Wait to see what we can draw. Wait to see what we can get. Um, and Chandra's had a good amount of amount of loyalty. Take an attack here if we can. We'll go to turn seven, and we drew well. <laughs> there we go. We drew something, uh, the other extra turn spell in the deck that we definitely would want to see, and that's Karn's Temporal Sundering. This is an interesting spell because it is legendary, and we can only cast the legendary sorcery if we um, control a legendary creature, Planeswalker, which we control three, Alania, Kitsa, and Chandra. But it says we can... Take an extra turn after this one and return up to one target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. What would be particularly brutal in this situation is I'm going to pay six for this. Chandra uh, is going to try to copy it. Alanya is going to try to copy it. So that's two extra copies, right? I'll happily give someone a card here. Twinning Staff is going to make a third copy. So I'm getting three copies of Karn's Temporal Sundering, effectively meaning I'm taking four extra turns and I'm bouncing four things back to hand. And I have a tough time believing that in this turn and the next three turns, I can't find a way to just take this position and run it forward, right? I still have three mana, I still have two mana left this turn plus the two treasures. I could get Bria down this turn to set up for next turn for a big prowess turn. I have Pirate's Pillage to continue drawing. I think I'm going to stop playing this one out here because uh, I think four extra turns is a lot of time to make this work. This um, Bria can start making things unblockable. Worst case scenario, Chandra can exile the top five and get us something to cast. I have a hard time believing that from this position, even in this deck, whose, buzz it, whose budget isn't super high, isn't playing a lot of flashy spells, I still feel like we can find something to do here and close the game out. So let's go into play test number two. Um, keeping a three lander with a Sol Ring, Corsication Mage, Bria, and Prismari Command. So I love it. That's a good mix of pretty much everything we want to see. We'll get the Vantress in tap turn one, because I can't think of anything else to do with it. I guess there is the option of us, what? Going that into that, which I guess might make more sense, because then we could copy Corsication Mage, or we could wait to get Bria down, right, and get multiple Corsication Mages, which, ah... Uh, I guess could be more fun. But let's say we do that. Mountain into the Soaring. Here we could do... I could do Fiery Islet if I want to go for Bria. Um, but this Capsule Vantress is going to get come in tapped right no matter what. And I think I'd just go three into the Decanter. Right? Get more mana. Get it, get it more set up. Now we're here on turn three with six mana. Love the idea of Bria, love the idea of Alania, so I think I'm just going to get Alania down and keep a mana up. Uh, we can't use it, but hey, you know, no one knows if we're not going to have potentially a counter spell. Turn four, now we're up to seven mana. Now with Corsication Mage, um, what I would imagine what was going to happen with Alania is we would get Corsication Mage, we would get a 2-2 copy of Corsication Mage, and if we pay the offspring, we get a 1-1. So my understanding is if I do this now, I should be able to get three, um, uh, uh, three basically copies, three individual um, copies of Mage. The original, the copy, and then the offspring I'm paying for. Because the offspring's on cast, I can't offspring the copy but I think it's still more than worth it. So effectively, we would get a copy, and we would get an offspring copy for four mana, right? And we still have three mana left. I don't really see much else we'd want to do with it. I guess we could we could tap them different, still be able to Prismari command this turn, but I think I'm okay to wait, just leave up something like three steps ahead if I want to, which would effectively let me um, draw forward discard two, by copying it or um, 
maybe so we'll kind of see. But I like this position. We're now dealing three damage anytime we cast an instant or sorcery, and that's something that can really build up. So on turn five, we're now up to uh, eight mana. Uh, I like the idea of Bria here. Now, I can I can copy Bria with Alania, but it doesn't make any sense, right, because it's legendary, so that's, that's going to hurt me in the long run. But what I think I'm willing to do here is spend the other four mana to big score. Uh, I think I'm willing to pitch Prismari Command to it. I think we're going to end up drawing a lot better and get better value off of these two. So what will happen here is we're going to have a bunch of triggers. We're going to have the three Corsication Mage triggers. We're going to have the Bria trigger, and we'll have Alani's trigger. Uh, again, in this situation, I'll always give the card to the person that I think I'm worried about the least. Give them the card to get another copy of Big Score. So now I'm drawing four, making four treasures. Bria, I guess we'll just make like Alania unblockable. All these get plus one, plus one to end a turn, right? Because we cast a spell. And three damage goes off, so one, two, three, four. And then making those four treasures. And this is, I think, where that copying effect can become so effective. Alania, we said, had unblockable this turn, so we smack into somebody for four. Uh, I guess I could keep going here this turn, but I kind of like the idea of just keeping up the removal here, keeping up this to counter something potentially. Again, I don't see the point of going deep this turn. I'd kind of like to go deep maybe next turn when I can use Rao to get another copy of something and just kind of see if I get something even better next turn to draw before I commit uh, to too much. Turn six, we draw an island, and I think we need just a couple more cards to get our party going. So I, I would probably, I'll, I'll spend four on Rawl. What that's going to do is all the Corsication Mages go off, Bria goes off, and uh, Alania won't because it's a Planeswalker. But we'll give them all prowess, we'll, we'll give Alania unblockable, all these get plus one, plus one to let a turn with the prowess, and deal, you know, three damage total to each opponent. Rawl says whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery, it deals one damage to target opponent or planeswalker. So it's not every, it's just one. But that is still some nice chip damage. Um, I'm going to go ahead and remove the two loyalty counters so that whenever I cast my next instant or sorcery, I can copy it, choose new targets for the copy. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to spree three steps ahead. And right now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I have nine mana which means I can spree into the three and the two. Um, and the way this should work, from my understanding of how spells get copied, is um, I should be able to copy all of, the, um, all of the costs that I paid, meaning that effectively what should happen is I should get three car, uh, tokens that are a copy of target artifact, create dark control, and draw six, discard three. Now, I apologize for my interaction, but that is incorrect, but that is my understanding of how that works. So one, two, three, four, five, and one treasure for six. I give somebody the card, but I'm going to get two, so two copies total. So three copies of a, a artifact or creature, draw six, discard three. So only one trigger from Corsication Mage and Bria for this, but I get three copies of it. So I'm going to make basically three copies of the Corsication Mage, right? Because I want to deal now six instead of three for each of these spells that I'm casting. Um, and then draw, I have to do the, um, sorry, I have to do, do the draw do, the draw two, discard one, three separate times. So there's one, there's two, and there's three. And then Rao would deal one damage out there each time I copied them. Now I have three mana left. I've I've done a I've done an instant uh, already, so I could cast a sorcery if I wanted to. But I think I'm just content to move to the next turn. Um, on turn seven here, we should have a a great time, you know, hitting our opponents for some good damage. We'll go one more turn, get the sulfur falls in. Um, let's think about this. I really would love a way to draw. Balmore for turn, so we can start getting some buffs right to our creatures. That's not going to trigger Alania. Then I would cast the Floodcaller, and I'm going to give somebody a card so I can get a copy of the Floodcaller. It says, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, birds, frogs, otters, and rats get plus and plus until end of turn and untap them. So now anytime we're casting a spell, we're getting 
plus two, plus two here, plus one, plus oh, and trample, and then plus one, plus one from the Bria. So we're getting plus four, plus three total on all of our otters right now whenever we cast a spell, right? Um, so that's pretty great. Now we're in good speed there. I do have a, I do have a, um, I do have a instant I can cast if I want to. So that would be, you know, that would be a good, a good shot there that I could take. I'm just trying to think if there's any other way I can draw a card. Uh, if I did that and I did that, I could sack the fiery islet to draw a card and yeah, seize the poils is perfect. So that is what I would love to cast instead. Uh, minus two Rail, and Rail goes away to copy it. Pay three mana into the Seize the Spoils. I'm going to pitch the mountain. Give somebody a card to make a, and this is going to make two copies of it. But when I cast, everything's going to get plus four, plus three, and untap them. Coruscation Mage is dealing uh, six damage here to all of our opponents, and I'm getting three copies of this because remember Rao gives me uh, one of it. Just drawing six and uh, making three more treasures. And that was a sorcery. Uh, so if I can cast another instant, I can get a copy if I want to. Uh, that time warp certainly seems good, but I'd love to cast it when I could copy it. But again, I think we're in a position now where, depending on what our opponent's life totals are, I could just prioritize casting as many more spells as I can just to, again, hit people for six multiple times with the course case and mages and then try to move myself into combat to end the game with all of these otters that are now, um, uh, you know, sevens or eights with trample because of Balmor. Um, the only argument for time warping could be to do it next turn when I would have more creatures that could trample in. But I mean, uh, I feel like with what we have at this point, we can make something happen, get another gutter snipe down if we want to. But I think I just take a big attack here. They're already pretty big. And if I think I need to one more turn to finish it, you know, time, we could time warp now before combat, get them even bigger, take the combat, and then next turn rapid hybrid to, you know, probably deal more damage with the mages and finish. But let me know, what do you think of Alania down in the comment section below? I like the deck. I think it's fun. It's a good mix of spell slinging and the otters. There's a lot of otters that I didn't really try that you could try and bring in if you want to make it more tribal, make it more focused on the otters. But I think this is a really good spell slinging deck. And for how I made it, I think it's well worth the cost for what you get out of it. But let me know, what do you think of it down in the comment section below? And I catch you guys next.